Hey folks, what's up? Been a while, been a while. Uh, but I'm back. I want to get working on the lathe again. Here I have a big old piece of catalpa. And originally I was trying to gonna uh, try to make a sink bowl out of it. But it was just too... Uh, a bunch of bark inclusions, a bunch of rotten spots. It just wouldn't make a good sink. So... I took it off the lathe and moved on and uh, did whatever. So anyhow, it's uh, too nice of wood to let go to waste and just sit around the shop. So I got a... <laughs> I can't remember what it's called. Anyhow, I, I screwed the plate on the back of it and mounted it directly to the lathe. Right now I got a, a big stiff fat countersink in here. I'm going to recenter. And uh, this thing is warped. Was it been a year and a half? It's been sitting around, so it's on there, kind of sketchy right now. So I'm going to get recenter everything, reround everything, and basically start from fresh. I got it on the slowest speed. Let's see what happens when I turn it on. If I'm going to get knocked out or something. Let me get my uh, face shield. Actually, not as bad as I thought. Let me put it in forward this time. Yeah, it's got a wop to it, but if I recenter everything, I think we'll be okay. I'm just going to ease that countersink in there and let it cut as it wants. Then I can get my live center in there and make everything sturdier. And also the bottom isn't very flat where I got that piece screwed to. So I need to flip it around once I get this centered up and re-flatten the bottom. But I think what I'm going to do is get my live center in there now and return the outside from where it's at to get some of that wobble out of it so it will run smoother to get a flatter bottom. I'll turn you back on in a minute. I got my uh, center hole in. Let me get my tailstock on. Alright, I got my live center in there. And I'm going to get this up as close as possible to keep the wobble out. And this should stiffen it up quite a bit. Ooh. Yeah, I got my uh, arm cranked all the way out. I'm going to have to reposition my banjo because I got about as close as I can get right now. guess I could get it under it. Hmm. Well, I'm doing the outside anyhow for now, so under it would be okay. Let me unscrew this, back it off, and get my banjo past it. And uh, I'll turn you back on after that. Be right back. Okay, now I can get the room that I need. Get that in there nice and secure. Good pressure on it. <clears throat> And even if this thing, uh, I got decent screws in the back of it, but a couple of them are a little sketchy. So, well, this is just pain in the butt. So even if those break loose now, there we go. I will, uh, it will still be secured against the lathe. Just a hair above center. Let's see if we got our wobble compensated for it. Wow, we have almost a half inch, three quarters of an inch. 
So I got a little bit of meat to take off to recenter everything. There we go. Everything's secure. Hopefully I won't have to resharpen. Um, let me tilt you a little bit. I hope I don't make you seasick. Is that better? How's that? Alright, let's see if we can make a cut. If I remember how. It's been a minute. This thing is way off. Just keep poking away at it. still spots on here I'm not even touching yet she's way out but it's getting closer on this for a while like a half hour and I'll turn you back on much nicer yeah I actually got a decent cut on that one <laughs> it was ripping the grain pretty good this uh, catalpa has a lot of figure in it which means a lot of different grain directions so you end up having to do quite a bit of sanding. Thank goodness it's soft enough wood where the sanding isn't too bad. So it's all dried out now. So I'm going to sand this up a little just to see where I'm at. And I'm going to have to CA glue all of this bark inclusion to make sure it stays put and I can get a finish to stick to it. I got a little hump right here I want to take care of. that I spoke too soon I had a big chunk of the bark one of the ones I wanted to save pop out so I need to find where that goes oh it wasn't this one that's cool right out of here but I can live with it uh, we got a nice natural edge here now or a live edge so I can totally live with that I like it I think I'm gonna leave this out instead of re-gluing it that's the bark in, that's the bark out. Although it's going to make the hole smaller. I hate decisions. I'm not a good decision maker. What's your opinion? Leave it out? You know what? I like the underlying wood better. It's got a nice hump pattern to it where when I put the bark in it's just smooth. So I'm going to leave it out. But I am going to stop where I'm at and hit this really good with CA glue. Let it dry up and then I'll get back with you. Hold on. Boy, I just avoided disaster like you wouldn't believe. The old CA glue. Yeah, it's been around a minute. I went to try to take the cap off and bammy, it broke right off. I avoided getting dumped on big time. I got a little bit on me. 
but I didn't glue no hands together. That's why you save the extra bottles and spouts. Turn you back on the few. All right, super glue's all dried up. I'm just going to trim this outside edge <clears throat> and then do a little sanding on it. See if I can get the tool marks out. I only have a couple. scraping a little shear scrape maybe to tighten up some grain I got some hit and miss and I'm you're just not going to get it smooth with a bunch of hit and miss but I can go very lightly and try a little bit of shear scraping much better. I'll have to start with some probably 80 grit to get the fuzz off. Maybe I'll put a little bit of uh, finish on there to firm it up and then we can go from there. Alright, <clears throat> I sacrifice a 80 grit belt sander belt. My belt sander is on the kaputs right now and needs a new trigger. Uh, remember, if your tools sit for a long time it's not good on the triggers. So I'll sand it up real quick and get a decent finish and then we'll flip it around. Save your sandpaper if you scrape all your uh, excess uh, CA glue off first. It'll make your sandpaper go a lot quicker and not clog it up. This looks like I'm going to be able to do a decent finish on it. Alright, I got her all sweet, switched up and recentered. I got the speed kicked up. Let's see how we can hollow this thing out. Here we go.
about as far as I can go with the tailstock in the way. So I'm going to pull that out of the way and uh, go from there. Be right back. I had to do quite a bit of CA work on this bark and stuff and to make a little bridge with some sawdust. So it's cold in here so I put the halogen light up close to help it cure. It seems to be doing the job just to bring a little heat to it. We'll turn you back on when that's all done they start cutting again. The old super glue is a curing. Smoking. Don't breathe the fumes. All right, folks, I got her all sanded up. Today I'm going to use just good old spray polyurethane. I'm not even sure what the, uh, oh, semi gloss. But this is just ba base coat. I sanded the heck out of this thing. And uh, I want to do a shout out to Phil Anderson who really taught me the value of sanding. In general, I hate sanding. But go check out his channel. Uh, Phil is does miracles on the lathe. He's awesome. I've learned a lot from him. Very funny too. So we're going to uh, shine this thing up and see how it looks. I'm just doing the edge right now. That's probably going to need more sanding. So I'll use this as a sanding sealer. I guess I should cover my lathe, huh? but it will it will sand off I suppose alright let's see what kind of grain we ended up with here this catalpa is like wonder wood I want to really thank my neighbors for giving it to me it was awesome Just the grain in this stuff is just crazy. Look at this. Look at that grain. I hope that comes through. Look at that, how crazy. Is that awesome or what? Ah, I love this stuff. This is just a quick first coat, making sure everything's covered and well saturated. It may be sanded again, I'm not positive. I'll try not to get any runs in it, of course. The grain in this stuff just pops. I had to uh, take this can of spray into the house to thin it up some got pretty cold sitting out here in the shed oh sorry workshop yeah that's it this thing has just got that that's not a that's a ray going through there that's not a flaw just look onto it Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Mm -mm -mm. It just catches the light and shoots it all over the place. Beautiful. Um, that's all I'm going to put on now. I got to run to work. So I'll leave you with that thumbnail right there. Just look at it. Crazy. It just catches the light and goes every which way. Look at the tiger stripe in here. That's what I call it anyhow. Compression grain, whatever. All right, we'll turn you back on when we fin start finishing up the inside. Peace for now. 
Is this thing on? All right, folks. I've got the tailpiece out of the way. I've got it screwed onto a base plate. My only issue right now is in order to hit solid wood, I had to use like two and a half inch screws. So I've measured from the bottom in my two and a half. And I'm going to use my bull gouge until I get in here. When I get about five and a half inches deep, I'm getting close to the screws. So I will switch over to carbide until I start nicking the screws. And then I'll deal with it then. I'm going to have to back those out and put in shorter, fatter screws. But uh, it is what it is. And I want to turn this piece and I did what I had to to do it. So let's get cranking on this mother. Oh, I got to turn the speed back up. Hold on a minute. All right, I got my speed cranked up. I checked all my clearances. Everything's good to go. Let's hope it don't fly off there. Let me get my uh, earphones and uh, face shield on and we'll get after it. She's humming right along about 750 RPMs. to drop that uh, tool rest down a little bit to get a better angle on it. Okay, I got a little issue here. Already from the vibration, the uh, couple of the screws have loosened up. I'm going to pull this off and try to tighten them up. Hopefully they're not stripped. If they are, I'll have to deal with that. Be right back. Alright, I got it tightened back up. I had to replace one of the screws with a longer, fatter screw. Sorry about the squeaking. And instantly it felt better. Now, how, how I was able to discover that screws coming loose is uh, I spun it without my headphones on and I actually heard a weird different kind of noise coming from the lathe. So, if you hear something slightly different, investigate. So, that's what uh, avoided uh, flying across the room. So, now we can get back at it. Oh my goodness, what I just went through. I had a little wobble in it, almost a quarter inch. And if you watch my videos, you see me blow through the side of one. That is what's caused by that, because it's cutting more on this side than it is on this side. So, after about a half hour of playing with the screws in the back, shimming, unshimming, switching screws, fixing stripped out screws, I finally got it where it's running true again at least close enough for my camp. So I'm trying to get back at it, smooth out all the bad cuts that I just made because it was wobbling, and then I'll turn you back on for Pete's sakes. Be right back. Okay, I got you turned back on. <clears throat> and for not having a primer coat on there, I'm pretty impressed with this stuff. Just good old Minwax spray polyurethane. I only have uh, about three coats on there and I shot it on there while it was spinning slowly and it came out pretty decent the top coat isn't cured yet <clears throat> but it's uh, semi dry to the touch so I'm gonna pop this thing off here because if you just torque on it I'm afraid I'm gonna break my indexing pin or break the bowl 
again like an idiot I didn't loosen the allen screw hold on <clears throat> there's a little allen screw that stops this thing from backing itself out when you're running reverse and if you don't back that out it won't unscrew either and if you force it you can actually mess up the threads there we go now to finish off the bottom of this I am not going to be able to flip it around and uh, cut it I'm going to have to pop this off and I'll show you in a second why and also I left the bottom a little thicker than normal it's about an inch or so thick Again, I'll show you why that screw had a good bite there we go. okay here's my base plate let me turn this around here's my base plate just real simple and it threads right directly onto the lathe The whole reason I couldn't center it is because there is no center. So I can't even flip it around and put my live center in there because it's just going to wobble. So what I'm going to have to do is get my side grinder out and just grind this off so it will be below the edge of the rim here. So I'll get that done and then I'll show you the finished product. Alright, I got the bottom finished off. There's even really nice uh, grain on the bottom, so I took a little extra time on it. It's not perfect, but it is the bottom. This is not a dust-free environment by any means. So after this dries, oh, I see overspray. After this dries, I'll check it over, and if I find there's like a dust residue on it, I'll give it a real soft buff with a uh, 4 out steel wool, and then recoat it again. <clears throat> I love this Catalpa, aka Cigar Tree. That's what we used to call it when I was a kid. Even the bottom of it. See that looks like a big gouge or whatever. That's actually a ray in the wood itself. Absolutely gorgeous. But it is a soft wood, so you got to be real careful with sanding because it does scratch. All right, I'll flip this around and take some decent pictures, and uh, hopefully you'll like share and subscribe.